Psyche Taxi! Oh, we're gonna get a wrong answer, Psyche Taxi. Oh, we're going faster, too. Oh, God. What turned the handle of the sliding lock? I just go in both? No, I can't. Okay. <clears throat> what was done to make the katana turn the lock? Stabbed into the effigy. The sliding lock was tampered with. No! There it is. There's our there's our wrong answer in Psyche Taxi. So why, why was it getting stabbed into the effigy the reason, then? Did it go through the entirety? And we just need to see that, possibly. How is the effigy manipulated to make the katana affect the lock? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I want to know. Spinning it, swinging it back and forth, making it fall. Spinning. So spinning it affected the okay. That's it. The reason the culprit stuck the katana into the effigy was so that it would hit the sliding lock as the effigy spun. Oh. Effigy spun. That's right. If you spun the effigy, the rope it was hanging from would twist. That's so smart. Then, if you let it go, the rope would unwind and the effigy would spin the other way. And of course, the katana would spin with it. I see. So the culprit used the katana's counterspin to push the lock into place? That's insane. The culprit simply needed to spin the effigy's rope and then swiftly leave. This would cause the spinning katana to hit the sliding lock. And thus was the back door of an empty classroom locked from the inside. Yes, that's how Angie's lab was locked. By using the effigy with a katana. A plan born from the heart of a sword traveling through the air to intercept us. Oh, but could it have moved the slide lock so easily? The sliding lock was pretty loose. A little push could move it. As long as the spinning katana hit the lock, it would have slid into position. Even if the culprit failed the first couple times, they could keep trying until it locked. Which is why the culprit chose to strike at nighttime as to avoid detection. Yes. Since the student council prohibited anyone from walking around at nighttime. Are you saying it's the student council's fault? I didn't say that. In any case, the culprit probably used the murder weapon for this trick. Yeah. It had to have been the right length to hit the sliding lock from the effigy. The culprit couldn't find a blade long enough in my lab. So they settled for the katana. The other effigies were only hung up, so we think it was some kind of ceremony. Yeah, that's fair. That way, we wouldn't notice the lock trick. But, Kokichi did say earlier that he could have picked the lock closed. I don't want to completely ignore that possibility. 
But I can't imagine the culprit would have done all this just for a distraction. Right. If that's the case, then Kokichi's confession earlier was actually... Seriously? You fucking lied again? <laughs> Cough it up, Kokichi! Oh, man. You guys got me. Okay, I'm not the culprit. You're telling the truth this time, right? I want to say I'm lying, but I'm not. Why did you say you were the culprit? I wanted to lure the culprit out. If I claim to be the culprit, then the real culprit would agree as well. You get me? And if they pressured me to confess, then that would have looked mighty suspicious. Sheesh. Darn it. It didn't go my way because Shuichi butted in on my plan. You and your fucking lies. Go sit in the corner and play with yourself. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I'll start right now. <laughs> All right. So, who's the asshole who set up this locked room mystery? You. I can't hold it up anymore. <laughs> What's the matter? You going soft on me now? Oh my god. Who made the locked room mystery doesn't matter since anyone could have done it. Don't you even understand something as basic as that, you filthy cum dumpster? <laughs> Woo! Cum dumpster! Finally! Someone finally called me a cum <laughs> dumpster! <laughs> Mew! <laughs> Mew! Mew! What should we talk about now? Good job, Gata. We must focus not on the locked room, but on who entered Angie's lab. Only one of the student council members, or Kokichi, could have gained entry. Therefore, the culprit must be among their number. That leaves us with four suspects. Sumugi, Gonta, Kibo, and Kokichi. Don't forget Himiko. She's also a part of the student council. Doesn't matter if she was besties with Angie, she's still a suspect. Yeah. That contradicts what you said earlier, which I can prove using my recording function. It's fine. That's just a waste of time. Me? A suspect? Oh. I never kill Angie! So, calling all suspects, what should we discuss next? I want to hear everyone's opinion. What would you say to get yourself off the suspect list? Why are you trying to lead the debate? You're a suspect too. Silence, outsider! Only the suspect rangers are allowed to speak. Is it suspect rangers? There's five of them, it makes sense. Agree. Those under suspicion should explain themselves thoroughly. We might catch them with their pants down! Anyway, I want to ask the suspect rangers. What should we talk about? What should we say to get ourselves off the suspect list? Well, guys, I want to hear what you think. Um, that's sort of a difficult question, you know? Gonta not smart enough to know answer to that. Yes, it is difficult to formulate a logical response to that question. Not articulate with words, huh? Don't you guys want to prove your innocence? They don't trust you one bit, and I don't blame them. You're probably plotting. Why did Tanko have to die? Huh? I want to know what happened to Angie, too, but... Oh. Can we talk about Tanko's case now and not just Angie? <laughs> I got you exactly where I wanted, Himiko. What do you mean? The two victims could have been killed by two separate murderers, you know. So we need to find the first blackened responsible for the first victim. We gotta figure out who killed Angie. Until we solve Angie's case, Tenko's case is meaningless. You 
Would you suggest that to waste our time? It's not meaningless. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Himiko. Oh my god. I mean, I know it's like, I know where the logic is. I know where things are going, right? But that point has bugged me for this entire investigation. As soon as Monokuma said that Tenko's death was irrelevant and like a waste of time, I was like, bruh, it's not okay. Like, we still have to investigate it. Everything's, we, it's something we're gonna have to get to. So the fact that Himiko is at least standing up for Tenko, I am absolutely here for this. Tenko's death was meaningless? How dare you? Poor Tenko. How could you do this to her? Himiko. Himiko, stop it with your crappy lies. Let her speak. Uh... Lies? Everything you said is total BS. You didn't give two shits about Tenko when she was alive. What is happening? But now you're like, oh no, poor Tenko, after she's dead. Come on, really? Kokichi, enough! No, it's okay. It's no surprise he'd think that. I know I ignored Tanko before. That's why I'm so upset now. I should have faced Tanko. Worked things out with her while she was still alive. But now it's too late. I can't complain to her or thank her. It's too late. Yeah, seriously. It's way too late to realize that now. Our only option is to face her death head on. Face her death? Himiko, I understand okay. what you're going through. Okay, we're, 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 we're getting there. I was like, Kaido, you better not shut this girl down, okay? Like, I, I love you and all, but we can't shut this girl down. Okay, we're, we're back into, like, better Kaido mode. This is, this is the Kaido mode I expect. Okay. So I'm going to help you out. Let's work together to find the truth. Yes. This is kind of what I expected. Cool. Cool. I'm not cool. going to let anyone say her death didn't matter. Yes, because it did not. It did matter. Kaito. All right. I'll put a silencing curse on whoever calls Tanko's death meaningless. The name of the curse is... Death Curse. I am... Um... Suppose being dead would silence someone. <laughs> it would. Listen up. All you guys are going to help out too. Abandoning someone who died and only thinking about your own survival. That's just as bad as a hit and run. I won't forgive something so messed up. Tenko was our friend. Going to want to know why she died too. I already told you that's so unnecessary. We're getting sidetracked here. No, even if it was a different culprit, we need to know how Tenko died. If we don't find out who killed her, we won't be able to work together. Not now, not ever. Even if this trial isn't for her, in order for us to survive, we need to get to the bottom of Tenko's death. Yeah, we need to get to the bottom of both of them. Even if, just because... Here's my logic on this. Even if they, knowing Danganronpa, or what I think I know about Danganronpa, is it's going to be the same culprit, right? It would be crazy if they are different culprits, but it would still be good to know, even if they were different culprits, to know who killed Tenko, because that means you can be suspicious and worried about them a little bit more. Not just to survive this trial, but so we can keep going and live on. Kaido. Finally, you noticed. Jeez, you're so slow. Huh? Did Kokichi want us to notice? Don't listen to his crap. We haven't decided whether there were two different culprits yet. Let us talk about Tenko's case then. Perhaps that will provide us a clue. Yeah, maybe. They're not wrong, but 
I don't mind going over Tenko's case. But that was an abrupt change of topic. Was that intentional? So what do we talk about first? For now, let's see if we can narrow down the list of suspects. Ten Crouch probably got killed during the seance, so everyone there's suspicious. <laughs> Ten Crouch! <laughs> the people who attended the seance. Uh, Himiko, Karekio, Shuichi. No. Wait. Yes, Himiko, Kokichi, Suichi, Korekio. There we go. That's it. I was like, what the heck, brain? Work, please. It was me, Kyo, Himiko, and Kokichi. So those four are the culprits! Not necessarily. Oh, Himiko still culprit? Well, that's probably just a coinky dink. The most suspicious out of the four is really Kyo. He suggested the whole seance idea. True, I may have suggested it, but I explained the procedure beforehand, yes? If we all knew of it before the murder, then we are all equally suspicious. Well, I suppose, but... In addition, the seance wasn't entirely in my control either. I was not the one who selected the room we performed it in. It was Himiko. What? How, which are the ones that we should should we use? The middle room. The middle room is always the best for stuff like this. Oh my god, you're right, she did. Very well. I shall begin the preparations at once. No way! Oh, right. I doubt that it's TV kill, but oh my god, she did suggest it. Ah. Oh. Also, we should not limit our suspects to only those who participated in the seance. True. The empty room had a point of entry from outside, you see. It did. The point of entry from outside, he must be referring to... Oh, uh, wait. No. Damn it! Never, no, it's not that. Okay. A point of entry from outside. Are we talking about the hole in the wall? Or hole in the corner? Is it there? I don't know what you're talking about. You were able to go outside from the investigation area. Damn it! Everyone's staring. Ah. Spot selection always gets me. I don't get why. It's not the floorboard. I don't know what it is about spot selection. I was wrong. Am I crazy? Yes. Oh no. I'm gonna die right here, aren't I? No, yeah, it's perfect. I gotta go to the restroom anyway, but. Damn it. What the hell? I'm like not even trying to die. There. Oh, I thought I clicked that earlier, bro. You did it about under the floor, right? I totally thought I clicked that like and it said it was wrong. Did I click the iron cage on accident? Not read, probably. Huh? Under the floor? Yes, there's a crawl space under the floor a person can move through. I absolutely thought that's what I clicked, because that was the hole in the wall under the floor that I was looking at. There was also a hole that connected it to the neighboring room. If the culprit used the hole, they could have entered and exited the seance room. I'm literally going to die because I thought if I clicked a button. If you that possibility, then there is another suspect. Another suspect? Ooh. Kibo. <laughs> it's appearing before me. Oh, I can see it clearly. The true identity of Tenko's killer. Kibo.
Yeah, the flashlight function. The sneaked in during the seance by crawling under the floor. But it was pitch black during the seance. How could they even see if they were under the floor? Because it wasn't dark under the floor. You see, our villain had a light. Light? You mean candle? I mean Kibo's flashlight function. Huh? Now hold on a second. Kibo could have used that function to get under the floor and sneak into the empty room during the seance. I said hold on a second. He used his robot functions to commit the murders. Hold on a second. It's true with the light you could move around under the floor. But is that possible? The culprit sneaked in during the seance by crawling under the floor. But it was pitch black during the seance. How could they even see if they were under the floor? Because it wasn't dark under the floor. You see, our villain had a light. Light? You mean candle? I mean Kibo's flashlight function. Huh? Now hold on a second. Kibo could have used that function to get under the floor and sneak into the empty room during the seance. Does the caged child need... It needs dark, right? Five people included in the spirit medium and a dark place with no light. Yeah, so... Kia or Kia or Kia would have seen the light. I said, hold on. Because he was paying attention to that. He used his robot functions to commit. Murders. Hold on a second. The carpet slipped in during the seance. And, and his flashlight function is way too light or way too bright. But it was pitch black during the seance. How could they even see if they were under the floor? Because it wasn't dark under the floor. You see, our villain had the moon. Light? You mean candle? I mean Kibo's flashlight function. Huh? Now hold on a second. Kibo could have used that function to get under the floor. No, okay. That's fine. I'm okay with being wrong because it's bathroom, but No, okay. Sure it was cramped under the floor, but there was enough room for one person to move around. Especially if Kibo had a flashlight. Damn it! Could that prove the innocence? Because the dried blood, uh, like, means that they're the crawling under the floor. But it was pitch black during the seance. Hole in the corner. That's what I want. A room that had that was in the corner of, or a hole that was in the corner of the room. The seance was held in. There's a space under the floor so you can, uh, you can see what was dropped there. How could they even see if they were under the floor? Because it wasn't dark under the floor. You see, our villain. That's wrong. I don't think the culprit could have used a light while under the floor. Yeah. There was a hole in the corner of the room. If a light were used. It would have leaked through, and we would have seen it. But, when we did the seance, the room was definitely pitch black. Exactly. It was. It absolutely was. So a light was not shined under the floor, which means you cannot claim I am the culprit. Jeez. Here I thought this would be the case where the murder could only be done by a robot. You have accused me of being the culprit more than once now, simply because I am a robot. Yes. <laughs> yes, Kokichi has. My status as a robot does not mean I am capable of performing superhuman feats. My vision is somewhat poor, and I only possess average physical strength and intelligence. All right, all right. You made your point. God, now I feel sort of bad for you. I neither want nor need your pity. Enough with the flashlight! It's way too bright! <laughs> it would have been difficult to move around under the floor in that pitch black darkness. Maybe the floor and the hole have nothing to do with this case. Then why was floorboard under Tanko lined up funny? 
grown to think that was so culprit could stab Tenko from underfloor. Ooh, nice observation, Gonta. Are you finally getting used to the class trials? Damn! Uh-huh. Thank you. Don't say it like that. You're better off not being used to this kind of stuff. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, Kaido. Maybe they marked Tenko with glowing paint and looked for that. Uh, no, but nice call back. That had let the culprit find her. Then they could stab her through the floorboards. Very nice callback. Boy, that sounds really familiar too. <laughs> but I'm just gonna ignore it. <laughs> Facts, Monokuma. Understandable. Her corpse didn't have any trace of glowing paint though. Oh, yeah. So then why was that floorboard loose? That's the question. The loose floorboard was the one under Tenko, right? If the culprit used it while she was still alive, she'd totally notice. Who fucking cares? Fussing over that won't get us closer to the culprit! We shouldn't dismiss this line of inquiry, however. Instead of butting our heads against this, how about we concentrate on another issue? What other issue? Perhaps first, we should figure out how and when exactly Tenko was killed. When? So not during seance? Tanko was in the metal cage for the whole seance, wasn't she? How could someone have gotten to her there? Maybe the culprit killed her before she went under the metal cage. That's not possible. She was alive at that point. This is the point of no return, Tenko. After this point, you mustn't speak. The next time you open your mouth, it'll be Angie speaking through you. Understood. I will not say a word until the seance is over. Yes. She was unmistakably alive when the seance began. That was right before we blew out the candles. But when the light came back... The floorboard was removed at that point. So it's likely she was already dead then. So she was killed when the room was dark? But she was inside Cage, right? Going to think it impossible to kill her then. <laughs> then she wasn't killed when the room was dark. It was a different time. A different time? How the fuck should I know? You figure it out, shitheads. Huh? Since Gonta said it was impossible, I'm proposing an alternate theory. Now hurry up and think! If you want to make my golden brain tingle, start circle jerking your limp dick brains! <laughs> oh, there's a football reference that I could make. But I might as well, like, put it on the screen, maybe, possibly. I don't know. I'll have to see if I can remember that. Where I can find that. Marker stone, our iron cage, the when sheet. Tenko got killed, I'm gonna go with the, the it sheet. It wasn't during the seance. It could not have been done at any other time. She was under the cage the whole time. And she was dead when the cage was lifted. What about moment cage was lifted? <sighs> Like that. When Cage lifted, Culprit stabbed Tanko real fast. So fast, no one saw. <laughs> oh my! So who lifted the cage? Himiko. Uh, it was me. <laughs> then obviously Himiko is the culprit. No. There's no did it. Tenko not being killed or not being killed during the seance? That might not be impossible, but there is no evidence for it. When Tenko got killed, it was during the seance. It could not have been done at any other under the cage the whole time. And she was dead when the cage was lifted. 
What about moment cage was lifted? That's wrong. Yeah, because the, the the white sheet, the fact that it was the blood under the white sheet that proves that, or disproves that. No, it wasn't possible to kill her the moment the cage was lifted, because the inside of the white cloth had Tenko's blood on it. Yes. That cloth was removed before the cage was lifted. If Tenko was stabbed then, there wouldn't be blood on the cloth. Yep. What? But how could my golden brain be wrong when it felt so, so right? The only possibility is that Tenko was killed during the sale. I got your remote Whoa. right here! Holy heck, that actually jump scared me. I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> no. Tenko was killed during the seance. Mew, you jump scared me. What the hell? I'm gonna prove it right now. My golden brain is gonna go all out. Brown. Tenko died after the seance. It happened when the sheet was lifted. That was the moment the culprit chose to stab the fuck out of Tanko through the cage! They stuck the thin blade through the gaps of the cage. And that clean white sheet got stained blood red! But the weapon was a sickle. Only the blade could have fit through the gaps. The blade's all you need. If you stick the blade through a gap in the cage, it'd be long enough to reach Tenko. Sitting in there with her neck all exposed. She wasn't that far from the cage's gaps. In which case, the person who lifted the sheet is the culprit, and that's none other than Keo. There's a whole amused logic somewhere. All I have to do is uh, counter the, it with the all claims. You need. If you stick the blade through a gap in the cage, it'd be long enough to reach Tenko. Sitting in there with her neck all exposed. She wasn't that far from the cage's gaps. In which case, the person who lifted the sheet is the... And that's none other than Keo! Wait, did it... The did I hit the wrong button? Need. If you stick the blade through a gap in the cage, it'd be long enough to reach Tenko. Sitting in there with her neck all exposed. Okay, no, it is wrong. I was wrong. In there with her neck all exposed. This is the only thing I can disprove. I was wrong. It's all exposed. Wow, I'm gonna get every single possible answer wrong here. In there with her neck all exposed. Wow, I actually did. I got every up. Wow, that's like a really oh. low, low chance of me doing that, but. Look at me go. The Doing my need. thing, getting everything wrong. It is the stone. Why is the stone the answer here? We gotta find that out. It'd be long enough to reach Tenko. Sitting in there with her neck all exposed. I'll cut through your words. Wait just a minute. Tenko wasn't sitting down inside the cage. Oh. Duh. She was bent over with her forehead against the marker stone. And the cage itself was about three feet tall. The sickle's blade was too short to reach Tenko while she was in that position. Then I messed up again? How could this happen? I am so embarrassed. No worries, Mew. Everyone already knows you're an embarrassment to the human race. Woo! Yeah. No worries. God, no, no, don't join in! <laughs> God, to no, don't join in on that. If Shuichi is right, then it's impossible for Tenko to have been killed through the cage. She couldn't have been killed during the seance since she was in the cage, right? If she was killed then, the cloth over the cage would have been pierced. Right. Not during the seance or from below the floor. Then it's impossible, isn't it? Yeah, for a living person. Huh? 
<laughs> what if Angie's spirit killed Tenko? What are you talking about? Th th that's not possible. We don't know that. Some things are impossible for a human, but not for a spirit. D don't say stupid stuff like that. S screw spirits. Stop that now. Angie's spirit killed Tanko? Why? Himiko? Why would Angie's spirit kill Tanko? What if Tenko killed Angie, and then Angie's spirit came back for revenge? Like I said, that's impossible! Spirits can't be culprits! Then explain how the culprit killed Tenko under these impossible circumstances. Well, uh... See? You can't explain, can you? Only a spirit could have done that! Wait! I know! What if the culprit was hiding inside the cage? If they were in there, they could have stabbed Tenko during the seance. No. If there was someone else in the cage, we would have I noticed. I agree with Kaito. The culprit could have been inside the cage. Oh, what? You do. Nonsense. There was no space in the cage for the culprit to hide. Maybe the culprit wouldn't need to hide in the first place. What? Because the floorboard. They came up from the floorboard, killed, and then went down. Also, the culprit could have killed her in the cage at any time. I think you know what I'm getting at. Yeah. Yes, I do. The they she's referring to. 